there has been a particular format that they just pull out from the, um, the cabinet and then read it anytime there is a coup d'etat. And that is to say we condemn the coup d'etat and uh, there should be a return to constitutional rule. Uh, but the, the point is that that, appear, that uh, process and that approach has not worked. And so I don't know why they keep on doing that and why every day the situation seems to deteriorate. Like you rightly said, there have been six or seven coup d'etat, including unsuccessful ones. And so the point is that something needs to be done and done now to promote peace and security, especially in the West Africa sub-region. When the president spoke, he talked about um, unconstitutional means of attaining power. But that uh, approach needs to be re-examined in two ways. One is that there can be situations where unconstitutional changes in governments or the, um, undemocratic means of changing government or unconstitutional means of changing government can be certainly justified. Mm. But, and then the second point is that he didn't talk about democratic governance of, uh, in the countries. When this, the democratic governance process is not in place, that is what triggers the coup d'etat that we are uh, talking about. Mm. And so I'm not sure if we should continue to listen to ECOWAS and, um, and, and don't see any progress on the ground. That right. is a big problem that we have mm. to face. In, in one of the reports I've been reading, as in news reports I've been reading, uh, there's a particular you know, paragraph. It says that uh, January 24 this week, hours after Burkina Faso won a dramatic penalty shootout to reach the Africa Cup of Nations quarterfinals in Cameroon, the 64-year-old Kabori was deposed by mutinous soldiers. Like the soccer match, the coup was welcomed on the streets of Ogadougou, the capital city. We have seen, like in Mali, the people, you know, poured onto the street to celebrate the, you know, the coups. So this is what is happening. What what was we accounting for this? It's becoming attractive to go back to the era of coup d'etats. Yes, that is the case. Um, I remember writing my PhD dissertation in the late 90s and making the point that the democratic arrangement that uh, was being foisted on African countries by the West is fraught with danger. And we are going to face challenges um, returning to democratic rule in, in Africa. And that is what is panning out now because when you are talking about the democratic transition process, there were two main times that um, took place around the time. The one is led by social forces. The other is by is uh, controlled by governments. The social forces one, remember successfully how it took place in Benin, for example, where the government was stripped of its powers, the ruling party was dissolved, a transitional arrangement was set up, including all the necessary social um, uh, civil society activists, and the new constitution was drawn, elections were held, and uh, Benin returned to democratic rule. Those type of arrangements were not allowed to continue. And in the end, it was a government sponsored ones that took place our own case in Ghana and other countries. And that didn't lay the proper framework for, for democracy to strive. Secondly, democracy that is imported cannot meet the particular cultural circumstances of the people for it to thrive. And so um, governments have taken advantage of the weaknesses in the structure and are therefore um, making the people to suffer in a lot of ways. Laws have been made, but the laws are not working. Human rights are um, um, written boldly in the constitution, but it's not respected. So the democratic system is, is not working. Um, we are moving from liberal democracies to illiberal democracies. Third termism is on the rise where governments are changing the constitutions to remain permanently in office or setting up dynasties and so on. So the people will ultimately rise up against such situations. And that is what is happening. It is a trend that unfortunately 
is likely to continue. If ECOWAS, AU, does the, the, these uh, two main bodies that we have do not change the strategy in terms of how we recognize governments and in terms of how we ensure that we bring out the relationship between respect for human security and how that relates to violations of human rights and ultimately leads to uh, the military coming to power.